Hey, it's Mrs. J here, blogger in chief of prayerandpedagogy.com. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and thank you for being here. I am super excited about my brand new series, Not Another PowerPoint. Look, I absolutely love giving my kids creative control in the classroom. I love giving them multiple opportunities to share and show what they know and what they've learned. But I also hate sitting through yet another PowerPoint or some other super snazzy jazzy version of a slideshow and so in this series I am going to highlight some of the options that I give my students for creating projects and presentations that do not include another version of a slideshow I'm excited to introduce you to Pixton today let's get into it so welcome to pixton.com um, that is the website that you are going to visit you are going to uh, log in or create an account for the first time I like to do that using my Google so it's really easy to sign in and when you do it it will bring you to your dashboard well the very first time you uh, create an account it'll walk you through creating an avatar for yourself um, but after that if you create an educator account it will bring you to your dashboard and I just want to highlight some of my favorite parts about Picton Picton does have their own YouTube channel and a website that has a lot of walkthrough videos so I'm not going to highlight how to go through the entire process but I do want to emphasize some of my favorite parts so the reason why I started using Picton in the first place is because of the avatars it allows you to create an avatar um, and you're able to customize it kind of like a bitmoji or some of the other popular websites but I love this one because I just felt like it was school safe um, for my kids to be able to create avatars and so when you first come in it'll allow you to create your own avatar there are so many different options for um, how you can customize your avatar to give it the best chance of looking like something that resembles you um, and it's so much fun to play with this part is what my kids really enjoyed my students we're doing an introductory all about me project and I gave them the option to either use a real picture of themselves but if that didn't make them feel comfortable I wanted them to have a representation of themselves and they were able to create avatars using Pixton and so as you can see there are a lot of different ways that you can customize and make your you know avatar look like you it can get very specific and detailed um, and I love the way that it just gave you options um, that my students felt like they could create something that fit their personality and things of that nature so once you are all the way done with creating your avatar you can put it in different poses um, which they also really enjoyed um, and then you can download it so you can download a headshot or you can download a full body image of your avatar and you can go back and change as many times as you like and download as many versions of your avatar as you would like um, so my kids really enjoyed making those avatars and one of the ways that we use that um, is in our classroom so I set up a classroom this is just my practice class so that I can keep my actual information safe and secure um, but this is a practice classroom I set up with my kids it's really easy to do if you click on a new classroom and you give it uh, a name all right it'll give you two options for how you want your kids to join the classroom I tried both of them and they were both really simple and depending on how many options or how many kids or how old your kids are really either one of them is easy to do you can um, use the Google IDs which is what I chose and so when you choose this one it'll give you a link to share with your students your students click on the link and they'll be brought to Pixton they'll be asked to sign in to their Google account and then they automatically have an, an account and they'll be taken to the process to create their avatar if you use the Pixton usernames um, you will create a list of your students and then Pixton will generate usernames for them based off of the name that you put in and then you will have to send each individual student their own username so a little bit more steps but really depending on your class size and how old your kids are neither one of them are really complicated um, a couple of ways that I enjoyed using this with my students 
is um, first our classroom. So if we go to our class, um, you can see the students that are in there. But then I love creating a class photo. So it's so cute and super fun to see all of our kids in a class picture, um, especially last year during the whole hybrid pandemic teaching when I didn't get to see all of my kids in real life. Um, it was nice to be able to have a class photo because we usually take an avid family picture um, and be able to have one where everybody could participate so they have some different themes um, this one was great for the end of the school year and every student in the class who creates an avatar will be generated in the class photo and then you can download it share it with parents share it with the kids share it with your staff things of that nature super fun the other way is um, the printables love these okay because it's i like to customize our classroom I'm kind of obsessed with bitmojis now that i know what they are um and so i like to include them in as many places as possible in my blended learning environment so i love the way that pixton gives you the opportunity to create so many different printables with yourself or your student avatars so they have these student cards that you can print that you can send a custom message to each of the students um, they have the speech bubbles I love the where is it right here the voice levels <laughs> all right that you can put the zero and the silent and all you do is click on it and it generates the printable with your avatar in it so this is great for our champs chart and things of that nature and depending on how old your kids are um, some of those are really going to make sense to have the visual um, aids to what it is that you are trying to get across um, and so I love this because there's just so many things that you can use and you just click on it they're already made and you are able to print them out um, this poster stamps thing is just super cute right classroom labels love it right so the principles is a great um, place to come and just try out different things that you want to print that you can include your avatar on so when it comes to student creation, um, what the kids have the opportunity to do is to create a comic strip and they can create a comic strip for almost literally anything. I have the free version. So with the free version, there are limitations as far as um, what options they have for backgrounds and things of that nature. But there's still enough for students to be able to share their thoughts and ideas and to get across what they have learned. One activity I like to do um, is two truths and a wish this is part of our SEL learning and so I did a demo where I created this comic strip and so I would put this up on the screen and then also present as I'm talking about what my two truths and a wish are and so my students have to figure out which of these things are true and which of these are something that I hope becomes true right and so here's a um, comic strip of me in a college dorm room saying hook em horns that's factual I went to the University of Texas at Austin hook em horns um, here's a picture of me in the classroom stating that this is my 15th year teaching and then here is a comic strip that represents me getting interviewed on the news about voting and in this one I'm wearing this outfit but in real life y'all it was pajama day at school and I went to go vote right after pajama day and of course that is the one time <laughs> where the news station wants to come out and interview me <laughs> as I am wearing these ridiculous pajamas because that's just teacher life um, so I would present that to my kids and have them you know talk about which one they think is true and which one I think is a wish the wish one is that it's my 15th year of teaching I am only about a decade in so have a few years to go and then students will be able to create their own comics um, so let me show you how it's done real simple and this platform looks very similar to the student one um, they would go to my comics and click on new comic they would give it a name and that helps them think about what is the purpose of their comic and they can always come back and edit it all right and so then it's going to pull up the comic generator and so right here is where you'll see the different backgrounds the characters you can add multiple people in your comic strip um, and so if they wanted to do a two truths and a wish, um, they could come and pick a background here. These are the ones that are free. You will notice further down that there are ones that have the locks on them. 
those are the ones that would require a different um, subscription. But they do have a, a lot of different options for your backgrounds that are free. And then you can go in and add characters. Um, one thing I love about this is that you can create other characters besides your avatar. Um, but you can also find other characters who are in your class. So it's so cool for them to say, oh, this is my best friend. And to pull a character in that is also in their classroom that they're able to incorporate into their comic strip. Um, and so, you know, let's say they want to talk about a time where they were um, presenting with their best friend in a different class and they would be able to pick a character they could customize that character love the variety of the outfits even in the free version of how many different outfit choices they have to really make a, a stand about um, their identity and so I asked my kids to be really thoughtful about the characters and about the backgrounds that they choose um, even in the free version you can change the focus of the scene so this one's kind of far out you can zoom in um, and change how much of the scene or where in the scene that they are and you can also of course add thought bubbles this is very crucial to being able to make sure that people can understand and follow along with the story and so they have four different kinds there's speech bubbles thought bubbles shouting bubbles and whisper bubbles really good diversity for helping students to really be thoughtful and meaningful about what their character is saying it who they're saying it to and also what they're not saying i um, mean then you can change the facial expressions and so <laughs> It's very entertaining. Um, and so you can change the facial expressions to really um, include something that demonstrates how that character is feeling. And then you can also change the actions and the body positions of the different characters that are in there. Um, and so it is a lot of opportunity for students to really d be a demonstrable in all of the different parts as they are putting together this storyline. And so if I'm asking students to identify with the Patriots in the American Revolution, they can create a comic strip and be really intentional about drawing that in and then I would have them maybe write a summary where they're talking about how they think the Patriots felt and what motivated them and what were the actions they would take next um, and so there's just so many options for what students can create here that this is a really fun and viable tool that is not another slideshow <laughs> So that is Pixton, the very first in my series of free and fun options for student and teacher creators to use as not another slideshow. I hope you found this useful. Please like this video if you did. Share if you're going to give Pixton a try. Comment and let me know. And don't forget to subscribe so that you can keep up with me in this series. Thank you for joining me at the intersection of prayer and pedagogy. See you next time.